which of the if you could get um, a sequel opportunity from any sports movie that you've done that you'd like to continue on in the story right of somebody that you've portrayed yeah that you'd like to get that one shot see what so-and-so is still up to yeah who, who I think that, that Ron Shelton's um, Bull Durham and everybody associates me with Bull Durham right mm -hmm. but I associate Ron Shelton with Bull Durham you know that's that's the guy that you know handed me a career with that kind of a role and uh, I think uh, finding out you know because Crash probably reminds me of a lot of managers, not always the best player, maybe not even a player that is a starter, although good enough to get to the pros. But when you think some of the legendary managers, Earl Weaver and Herzog and people like that, you know, they're never, for the most part, the guys mm -hmm. on the team. And then these are these guys that manage. And I think Crash Davis not ever making it to the bigs, having a kind of a, a version, a, a philosophy that you would say – that he had as a as a player in the minor leagues, understanding the poetry and the vulgarity of the game, and appreciating both. I think that uh, him and Annie Sarandon uh, could have had another life. So, what do you think Crash would be up to now? I think Crash pro might have probably coached. Like just. I think he probably could have been a big league coach. I think in the majors in the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I think he could have been. I think that's a kind of guy that has a kind of perspective, uh, and and knows the game and knows players, and and I think that. Probably that could have been a sequel. What do you think Ray Kinsella would be up to right now? After after all those, I know yeah. it's I, I know it's it's as perfect an ending as any movie. Can yeah, I forget about sports. I know, movies. but I would hate to see him selling T-shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, hawking balls and yeah. you know, or you know, corn, you know, like just a, a guy that pr pretending not to be a millionaire because he was right. <laughs> right, exactly. So you don't you don't even want to consider. I don't want to consider him selling bobbleheads. I'm sorry that. There's a lot of little, you know, um, that, that, I don't know, I don't know, if, is that our generation's It's a Wonderful Life, that movie? I think you, you, you're, you're not too far off, I guess, in the fact that people always consider It's a Wonderful Life being a holiday movie in that regard. No, I got, I got you. But, I, see that. See but I, I think I know what, what, what you're driving yeah, at. There's something there's some, endearing about that something movie. Something supernatural happening. I mean, it's really and about things that go unsaid between fathers and sons, and that's pretty biblical, right? Another film I want to bring up is No Way Out, which I, I, I love that movie. From that was a movie I found. Um, it was right after Silverado and Orion Pictures, who's now gone, had, was interested in ha doing a movie with me. And they, they thought, well, I like this guy. He's full of juice. We got these movies, and all of them I didn't care for. And so they went, hmm, you don't want to do any of our movies? I said, well, I don't see anything that fits me. I said, but I did read a movie that I liked over at Warner Brothers that they weren't going to make. It was called Finish with Engines, which is a naval term for shutting the thing down. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just perfect. And um, they said, well, let us see if we can't get that. So they they got the movie, and then that, and after that, Warner's never let another movie go uh, because it was a it was a really nice success. And mm -hmm. but it was really beautifully written. It, it caught me by surprise. And like I said earlier, when I read, you know. Field of Dreams, or when I read these movies for yeah. the first time, right. once in a while I realize when I'm done that I have a really big secret. So No Way Out was one of those for It was you. one of those. And when I read it, I knew it was really good. I just, by saying no to everything they had, I said, well, what about this movie? So early in my career, I was always kind of deciding what I would do. What was it like uh, being on a set with Gene Hackman? Well, Gene, you know, people ask all the time, you know, who's the best actor, who's the biggest star, who's the blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The line's long for the great actors I've been able to, to work with, really is. But I would say probably Gene was the best actor that I'd ever worked with. Um, I think Sean Connery was the biggest star I'd ever worked with. And that's the untouchables. Yeah, and I had a—this is too long of a story, but I had one with Gene. When this scene came up— mm -hmm. uh, we had been doing every scene at, to that point around a desk, just like this. Sure. Every scene. I finally I said to the director, I said, look, I don't, I don't feel like it's right. Gene, Gene Hackman standing there listening. I feel like it's over here, and it was like no one was saying anything. The director and I really butted heads on it. Finally, for whatever reason, and Gene's just like listening. And finally, for whatever reason, I said, I don't care. It's here. And I hated to do that, but I just said, it's here. And I don't need all of our scenes here. It's here. Sure. So we did it. And and it, there, at one point there was saying, well, what's Gene going to do? And I said, Gene will figure out what to do because he's really good. <laughs> yes. Gene will figure out what to do. Yeah. So I do the scene and we do it all day. And it, it's a scene now that's in the movie. 
And I remember as I was walking out to my car on MGN lot, uh, Gene was getting in and he goes, hey, I'm gonna talk to you. And I walked over and he goes, look, man, if you ever do that in front of me again, I'm just gonna, the way you disrespect, I'm just gonna tell you, that's not what he said. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought he was gonna say. What'd he say? He looked at me and he said, hey, uh, you know, it's been a, I went through a divorce. Um, I've been doing a lot of kind of questionable movies lately. And uh, it, when I saw you fighting for what you wanted today, he said it reminded me of how I used to feel about acting. He says it was good what you did. And then he just got in his car and drove off. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> but it, in my mind, that's where I thought he was going. If you ever do that again, because he was real quiet and I was really having to drag this moment to where I thought it should be. It was all by myself, you know? And so in my mind, I saw him maybe laying me out because he was real quiet during the whole thing. But, but it, whatever I did helped him, but he has no idea that how what he said to me how it helped me because he's also a big imposing guy, right? He like, is I a mean, big I, guy. I saw him once at the Super Bowl. He's like six. He's a, he, is a, he was a big guy, but he he said that to me. It was a real uh, term. That's awesome. Let me tell you this. I'm just hoping. I'm just going in my head with the filmography and what it was. I hope he didn't consider Hoosiers one of those movies that he regretted doing. I can't. He imagine. told me. He told me personally. He, he, he that movie surprised him more than any movie he'd been a part of. He. He, uh, I, I feel like I'm talking a little out of school, but he was uncomfortable with uh, the shooting of that movie and, and the direction that he thought it was going. And uh, I remember seeing that movie thinking it was one of the best sports movies ever. No doubt. I mean, it gets me But I think he was uncomfortable. Here. It gets me right, yeah. right in the yeah. heart and the gut every time I see that. I agree. Uh, and it's just, it's just a, it's a really nuanced, and uh, Hopper was great. He's, Gene was good, and Barbara Hershey's always good.